What are you looking to get out of it? It's worth 17.5. Says who? The Rat Rod Blue Book? <laughs> now, four signatures on an album, if this is real. There are a couple of bomb fins, probably from World War II or something. I'm not sure exactly. I have a four or 500 year old Pirate Chef. So this um, could be Johnny Depp's. <laughs> This guy's got two Rocky Marciano custom-made punching bags. Okay. I want to test them out. Right, Rick? Really, Dad? I think he's still got it, boss. <laughs> what do we have here? 1872 U.S. patent model for improving the dyeing of stripes on flags. Okay. He also told Rick who actually made this model. He told him when it was brought in and when it was also approved. He also explained that this flag was used to put strips on flags. He also added that if he was able to sell this item today, he would take his wife on vacation. So let's see how this turns out for him. Rick started to talk about the item and how expensive it was to make something back in the day. It is cool though. They were really expensive to make. The great thing about these old patent models is they actually work. This is really neat. Uh, so how much you want for it? I'm asking 3,800. I'll give you two grand. It's a patent model, it's really, really cool. I'll do 2,500. I'll go 2,200 bucks. It's gonna take me time to sell it. All right, I'll All right. that. Sweet. Yeah. 2,200 is awesome. 1927 Essex Super 6. The owner says they found it sitting outside. It has been there since 1943. He also explained what each part was made of, which in fact was awesome to see. This car was made out of random metal parts. Headlights are made out of pails and buckets. Anheuser-Busch beer keg, aluminum gas tank, tunnel made out of an old aluminum trash can, license plates for the floors, and a theft device where we've got uh, the knives over here. Good idea. <laughs> Just a little. Corey then asks him what he hopes to get out of this antique car. What are you looking to get out of? It. It's worth 17.5. Says who? The Rat Rod Blue Book? <laughs> the man tells him what he wants. I was pleasantly surprised. Turned well. Uh, I can do 13. It's the most I can go, though. I guess I'll take 13. All right, deal. Led Zeppelin 1 signed by the full band. Jimmy Page signed the front. John Bonham, Robert Plant, John Paul Jones. The owner showed him everything Rick says. This is very amazing. Jimmy, being the leader of the band, refused to sign the back. Rick talks about Led Zeppelin and how all their album were in the top 10. They were obviously everyone's favorite. Led Zeppelin is one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time. Every one of their albums was in the top 10, and six of their albums were number one. Now, four signatures on an album, if this is real, I probably won't want to put it in the store. I want to bring it home. Rick then asks how much he wants for it. He told him why he thinks it should be worth that much. Rick also asks if the owner has ever had the signatures checked out. 22,000. You're not gonna find something like this. So have you ever had it, the signatures checked out? Uh, yes. Rick then tells him he would like to call in a friend of his to check it out. Um, and you take a look right here. Oxidized, it's a little older. You know, you could tell. Nice aged ink. The Robert Plant signature is something I take a look at all the time. He would just flow through the signature. He had this big R and then the rest would just become all a big flow. Sweet. And what do you think it's worth? Right at about ten to twelve thousand dollars. I would give you eight grand for it. I sorry, well, you know, my best price uh, would be seventeen five. Okay, well, if you change your mind, come back. The offer's open. Brought in a few documents from a Bible in fifteen ninety four. How you doing? What do you have here? The famous breaches Bible, fifteen ninety four. I'm not very good at reading old English. Oh, you you try. Okay. The owner got it from his parents, who got it from about twenty years ago. He doesn't have any use for it, and he wants to sell. I'm hoping to get five thousand. Chum explains what he knows about the history of the Bible. This is pretty cool. The Bible we know today is King James Bible. This Bible actually was outlawed when King James decided, I'm gonna print my version of the Bible. This is what I want you guys to read. This was a very popular Bible, and people liked it because of these little scriptures on the side, explaining things to everyday person could read this. There was a big movement in Europe. Everyone decided to print Bibles in their native language. A lot of people didn't like that. Half of Europe it was legal, and the other half it wasn't. Chum asks how much he wants for it. The owner answers him saying $5,000. All right, um, maybe it could be worth money. Maybe it couldn't. It is the most printed book ever. I mean, I really have no idea. I'd like to have someone come down and take a look at it and we can talk about a price. Awesome, sounds great to me. Let me get her down here and um, she will give us our, her holy word. Cool, can't wait, excited, thank you. For sale, pretty easily. The leaf alone doesn't really have a lot of collectible value. Man, that sucks. Does it have a lot of monetary value? That's what matters here at this I know pawn shop. If someone were to buy this, I'd expect $200. It's about the cost of the frame. Cost of the frame. All right. Yep. It's been a pleasure, Rebecca. Take care. You too. Or this guy's got two Rocky Marciano custom-made punching bags. Okay. I want to test them out. Right, Rick?
Really, Dad? I think he's still got it, boss. <laughs> Rocky Marciano is just an absolute legend in the world of boxing. He's one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. I've watched footage of this guy fight. He is scary. You know, he's asking for a lot of money, $375,000. I have no idea what to pay for these or what they're worth. These were custom made for Rocky? Yes. OK. That's the tricky part, because they're one of a kinds. They're worth as much as somebody's willing to pay. He has a huge following. There's really not a smoking gun, so to speak, that without a doubt links these bags as the bags mentioned in the affidavits. He doesn't really think that the price that the seller is putting is not good. Do the $375,000 fit? I believe that they're real. I have photographs with Rocky and the you bag. You have photographs with Rocky and a bag. You may have a point, and you know what? You might be 100% right. It's just not a chance I can take. Now, I have an original Lincoln Parma card, basis of the Lincoln Penny. Rick sees this item and says it is amazing. He also tells him he has only heard stories about it, but has never seen one. I've only heard stories of these existing. This is the Brady's one. He did the image for the $5 bill and the cent, and this is the basis of the Lincoln Penny. The owner is a collector of Lincoln memorabilia. He adds that he saw this card at an estate sale 15 years ago. If I sell the card, I'm going to reinvest in my Lincoln collection. Rick talks about this card to the owner and how many people picture them. Parlor cards were sort of a new thing. Back then, it was a really cool thing to have a photograph in your house. Photographs were expensive. It became really popular to get like, you know, the president. It was a big deal. Like I said, I'm still in shock that you brought this in here. How much you want for it? I know you've got to make some money on it. This is the only one left. Fair price is $100,000. Um, that's a lot of cents. If we get someone in here, we'll have a better idea what it's value. I'll be right back. Okay. So I brought in some examples of authentic Lincoln signatures here. So if you look here, there's a 45 degree angle. Lower point and top point make that 45 degree angle. Rick, I do believe it is signed by our 16th president. The big question, what's it worth? Retail gallery setting, $150,000. Good luck with it. Thank you. I think 110 is a fair price. $100,000 and that's it. We had a deal. Sweet, I'll get you paid. This customer brought in a diamond Baroque cross. Supposedly a 300 year old cross. Rick collects it and checks it out. He talks about it. These are diamonds right here. Uh huh. But they don't look sparkly because diamonds are really hard to cut and polish. Rick then asks what he wants out of this cross. They go all the way up to 25,000 I've seen. Mm -hmm. And I figured leaving enough meat on the bones for you, I'd say 8,000. The hard things with this stuff though is dating it. You see all these serrations on the back? Yeah. Those are all done by hand. You can see all the imperfections and the different depths and everything like that. You can see that it was engraved. Now, the problem we have with this is we have no European hallmarks, and this would have been made in Europe. Right. This is a different color gold than this color. That's soldered on there. Okay. Someone took some old rose-cut diamonds and made this cross. This is not 300 years old. They, no, Respect. you got like 200 bucks worth of gold there. I really don't even want the diamonds. I'd probably just have to hang on to it for that. All right, have a good one, man. Appreciate your time. But in a huge frame to sell, he called it a John Wilkes Booth wanted poster. A John Wilkes Booth wanted poster after the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Rick tells him how this is a very important part of American history. So where did you get this? Rick talked about when this came out. He also added that the capture of John Booth was one of the most intense chapters in American history, and the original posters are very rare and expensive. Well, I bought this from a collector in Illinois. There's only about 30 or 40 of these in existence. John Wilkes Booth shot Abraham Lincoln at Ford's Theater, then jumped down to the stage and escaped. It was just a massive shock to the country. When it comes to putting a price on something like this, condition always matters. How much do you want for it? Pristine broadsides go for about 100000 this obviously is pristine. If you could give me one third of that, I'd be happy. It the expert arrives for the appraisal. Well, that's an important item. I happen to have a very good client who owns an original. I brought it with me to do a comparison side by side. This particular type, there's only four known to exist. Most of them were right about this size because they wanted it to be very, very visible. This would be kind of difficult to read. I think we have an early reproduction. It's not a modern piece at all. So what do you think it's Worth. It's probably worth uh, under a hundred dollars. I'm at the pawn shop today, so what I believe is an Aztec whistle. Chum checks it out. The owner thinks it is very rare and adds that he went to a couple of museums to find out, but it, but the people there didn't know anything about it. This is really cool. There's a few speculations of what it could be used for. It could have been used for healing and could have been used for ceremonies. I think the most sense to me is it would have been used in war. These things sound horrific. Chum asked if the man had ever thought of blowing this, and the man said yes, saying that it sounds like death. 
Chum holds it and takes a look at the body. You mind if I touch it a little? Yeah, please. It does have some really cool aging on it, fading on the paint right here. I'm guessing it's a, it looks like a face. The Aztecs, they were known for carving, you know, faces out of all kinds of stuff. What are you looking to do with it? I'm hoping to sell it for $500. $500 seems like a steal for this, if it's real. I'd like to have someone come. If this is real, probably worth more than $500. Do you have some time for me to get someone down here? Yeah, sure, that'd be fine. Out of every authentic Aztec whistle, there's got to be a hundred fakes. From here, it looks fabulous. Mind if I take a look? Please do. I have been looking for these for 30 plus years, seeing pictures of them. I have never seen one. These little black dots on here, and those black dots are the result of manganese. It's just amazing. Absolutely authentic. The million dollar question, does it work? You want to give it a whistle for us? I wow. imagine that's how it's supposed to sound. It's real. <laughs> and how much would you say it's worth? Can easily see this 5,000 bucks. Whoa, that much. Thanks for coming in. You don't want the 500 anymore, do you? The $5,000 sounds a whole lot better now. 1,500. How about 4,700? Doesn't look like you're gonna budge too much. 2,500 is gonna be my max. 2,500, huh? Hmm. Maybe see if I can sell this up myself knowing better true value of it. Pudding machine. These are amazing. I've read about them. Responsible for the rise and the fall of the entire German war machine. Rick and the customer discuss the item in detail, and Rick learns a few things about the machine. There are three in the United States. They are in horrendous condition. Found it intact. That's a reproduction box. I've never had one in my shop. I need someone to look at it. It is a really cool thing when you talk about to encrypt your messages. You know, having a machine like this is really a critical thing the Allied forces to be able to decipher them. When we decrypted the machines, they shortened the war by two years. The expert inquires about the machine. Which parts were missing when you found it? The warning plate, the rotors. Do we have matching serial numbers throughout? We do not. Serial number drives price. <laughs> the most expensive one, over $200,000. I would price this at $70,000 altogether. Well, I think my price is fair. Because he was asking $149,300. I'm going to go with Will on this one. I'd give you 50 grand for it. I can't do that. What do we have here? Wells Fargo strong box, an antique ball and chain. And a few old uh, handcuffs. All right, well, tell me about these things. Uh, actually comes from the human prison, the oldest prison in the state of Arizona. They had all the bad guys. They were not a nice place to be. Rick discusses the items with the owner. Never in the history of any prison did they ever have their name put on the balls. OK, so what are you trying to say? It's fake. What makes you an expert on this stuff? Oh, see a Wells Fargo Strongbox and an old Hollywood Western. Definitely get a lot of interest from collectors. Rick makes an offer, and the bargaining for the Strongbox begins. Box I'll give you 400 bucks for. I want $1,200 for it. No, you don't. 400 bucks for the box. I will get one of my guys to help you carry all this stuff out. 800. 600 bucks, maybe. At least get $500 for it. I'll meet you in the middle of 450. All right. All right. Yeah. The expert finally checks the legitimacy of the Strongbox. It's a complete fake. Damn it, Rick. Even the lock is a modern one. It's put together so well. But it ain't a $450 box. Why didn't you say anything? I didn't want to bust your bubble. <laughs> Newspaper. Dewey defeats Truman. This was a misprint. The reason why I want to sell it, I think it's a valuable piece of history. I think it's worth several thousand. I'm looking to get for it. Everybody thought Thomas Dewey would beat Harry Truman in a landslide. It's one of the biggest screw-ups in the history of journalism. The woman believes she owns a very rare newspaper, but Corey gives her a reality check and offers 45 bucks for it. So what do you want to do with it? Do you want to pawn it or sell it or? Sell it? There's only 12. I'd beg to differ strong. This was a big deal. No one threw that away. I'd make you an offer for $45. Are you kidding? Not at all. The seller did not like the offer, and Corey wasn't down for wasting $100 either. It's actually a gun. Push down on the inkwell, a bullet fires out through the trap door. Sweet, that means I got a gun aimed at my <laughs> Where in the world did you get this? State sale. Trying to figure out how to open it. Something straight out of a James Bond movie. I just don't get it, I mean. It's a 22 shorter. Rick is interested in it, but he brings his friend Sean over to take a look at I it. Have... Do you mind if I have a buddy look at this thing? Not at all. According to Sean, the desk is made between the 1890s and 1910. This thing is a gun. Press there, there's the trigger. Bullet flies out this way. Nobody's gonna buy this for their children. Anything manufactured for 1898 is okay. After 1898, has to be registered. You'd have to bring it to a gunsmith, and then it can be legal to buy and sell. That's okay. what I'll do. Rick will have to give up this one-of-a-kind gun desk, because it is potentially illegal. I wish I could help you out more. Thanks for bringing it in. Oh. I vintage guitar, custom-made for my mother, Peggy Eames, who is in our gang comedies. Really? It was our gang for years until it went on television, then it was the Little Rascals. And this was your mom's guitar? Yes. So one of a kind Gibson won a contest. 
to go and try out for our gang. This was one of her, our gang movies, Seeing the World. Those are some pretty cool pictures. So do you have any pictures with her with the guitar? Here's where she starts playing the guitar. When she got too old to be in the art, she started doing stage acts, singing, dancing. She wanted a guitar. She went to Gibson first. SJ's, Super Jumbos, that Gibson made. Rarely see 75-year-old guitars, because ones besides Gibson's would fall apart. All right, so is this supposed to be your mom right here? Yes. The negotiations begin between the man and Rick over the Gibson guitar. I'm looking for a value of 75000 A pre-war Gibson is a rare find. This is a real 1938 Gibson Super Jumbo. I'll give you $45,000 for the guitar. 75 is really where I still want to stay on it. $45,000. 65 would probably move me on it. I'll go 47. I, I think I'll haul it around a little bit longer. If you change your mind, I'm here. OK, I appreciate that. Walks into the pawn shop with an extremely rare item. I have a World War II patch. Whoa. Rick is amazed and asks where she got it from. Grandfather was actually an Alamo scout, handed down to me. Rick added that it is one of the holy grails of World War II. I know that patch is one of the holy grails. Rick tells her what he knows about the existence of this item. They were like Navy SEAL commandos all wrapped up in one. So this is my grandfather's certificate. It was actually medical aid. You had to volunteer for this. Massively brutal. Mm -hmm. We're going to throw you on like a Japanese island and you're going to have to live off the land. Survive for just unbearable conditions. No one got killed. <laughs> Let me have someone look at this. The Alamo Scouts patch. There were only 440 made. Is it an original patch? Because because look, construction, 80% this is an original Alamo Scouts patch. I'm thinking more like 2,500. Last one I saw sold, 4,200 bucks. If you change your mind, give me a call. Thank you. Chest that he claimed was 400 to 500 years old. Rick found it intriguing, but had doubts about its authenticity and real purpose. Ben got it from a friend on the Gulf Coast and thought it could be tied to pirates who once operated there. I have a four or 500 year old pirate chef. Well, this um, could be Johnny Depp's. <laughs> Where'd you get this? I got it from a friend of mine down on the Gulf Coast. Pirates was in that area extensively. Okay, right. but there's no real way to tell that. This is wood, you can open this up with a hammer. Right. Okay. So it wouldn't be something for treasure. Well, it could be off a of pirate's boat because of this little hidden compartment down here. Well, that's where they kept all their duty. That's cool. I know someone will probably know how old this is and where it's from. Do you mind if I give him a call and get him down here? Oh, please do. One of the things you have here is a lot of iron strapping. That's not normal for a sea chest. This is all real typical of this kind of chest, but it's not a sea chest. These were used in homes, and this comes from India. Those leaf-shaped latches are very typical of dowry chests. This thing's probably at least 400 years old, though, right? No. The manufacturing style is, is what you would right. have seen in the 19th century. You know, it's 100 to maybe 130 or 40 years old. He negotiated the price down from Ben's asking price of $2,000 to $5,000. You know, I told you two grand, you know, uh, half the age, half the price, a grand. How about 400 bucks? Uh, give me 500, I'll walk away smiling. Well, I'll be happy, done deal. How about I give you 450 and you walk away with a grin? 500, big smile. All right, 500 bucks. Deal. There are a couple of bomb fins, probably from World War II or something. I'm not sure exactly what they're worth. Uh, I kind of will take anything at this point as long as they're out of my backyard. So where'd you get these, man? Well, they were kind of sitting in my dad's backyard. And how much does it weigh? 50, 60 pounds. Did you paint that one? No, no, no. That came as is. Yeah, I've never had these come in before. Corey needs to figure out what to do with the giant bomb fins, so he chooses to get help from an expert and Rick. These are actually conical fins off low drag general purpose bombs. So before for World War II, we would just drop the bombs out. These conical fins got put in use from Vietnam on. Looks like it's strapped to about a Mark 84, which is a 2,000 pound bomb. We'll fly in, we'll identify a target. We roll in and kind of come in on a dive to improve accuracy. And then we'll release the bomb and then come off about 11 feet of concrete that can go through. The expert educates Rick and Corey about the details of the bomb fins, and Rick is concerned about the legality of the war items. The expert suggests a price for the collectibles, and negotiations begin. It's not illegal to own these things or anything, is it? No, they are out there, not very common. So what are they worth? Higher value, the smaller one, just because it's got more uses. You know, commercial value, five, six hundred dollars in that range. More in the twelve hundred range. Maybe like four hundred bucks for it, man. No. Seven. No. No. 
400 bucks or nothing. 400 then. I have this amazing comic book. Yeah, let me see it. Yeah, don't you touch that. <laughs> Corey explains why this comic is very valuable. Corey calls it one of the holy grails of comics. This is the first time anybody saw Spider-Man. Oh, like holy grails. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Corey asks where he got this item from. The man explains that he got it from a collection he and his brother got a few years ago. That's amazing. Well, that's real, man. I'll be blown away. The Amazing Spider-Man is the number one in this series. Corey says this is one of the mega franchises of comics, and it is one of the most collectible items too. And to collectors, practically priceless. I could probably charge people just to look at it. Do you have any particular amount you're looking for on it? 16,000. For a comic book? For this comic book. Do you mind if I have a buddy of mine come down and take a look at it? That'd be great. I've seen one in a 9.6 condition go for over a million dollars. We see some chipping here, which is very common. Really tough to duplicate that. This is such a classic page here. Very good to find condition. Closer to the six to $7,000 range. Really? What's your bottom number on the comic? I, I mean, I was saying 16, 13. The most I'm gonna pay is seven. So we've got a huge gap there. This is the worst time in history to be selling comic books. Mm. I could go 11. It's just not there for me. Bottom line, 10,000. Notes from the Republic and the government of Texas. Came to the pawn shop to sell a set of Republic of Texas and a Government of Texas note. Rick brings it up, and the owner explains that this was the currency that was in use throughout the 1800. So we have nine Republic of Texas bills, and this one, Government of Texas. Sam Houston right here. He was president. Most people don't know that. It just wasn't of the United States, the Republic of Texas. All the notes have been authenticated and graded. If the owner were to sell them at the appropriate price, Rick claims that he would be able to make a profit from this transaction if the correct buyer were to purchase them. I can definitely sell these. The guy will let them go at the right price. So what were you looking to do with them all? Sell them. And how much did you want for them? The nine note, 25,000. Government of Texas note, 650,000. Oh, really? Jay, how's it going, man? The guy's got a lot of stuff here. It's like a nice collection. What were you asking for this group? 25,000. The retail value on these, three to $600 each. On the 500, a couple of thousand. In an auction, it could go for more. But not. 10, Not even close. This is quite a bill. In my opinion, retail for five to seven thousand at a great auction, ten thousand. Never been seen before. A limited number of collectors. This is a small universe of collectors. Most people don't have a clue what it's worth. I have a Ronald Reagan poster. Dennis Quaid? His cowboy hat. I think it was Gorbachev he gave a cowboy hat to finally spots the Dennis Quaid signature on the poster and asks for an offer. Dennis, sign this. Okay, so where did you get it? I got it from the producer. It's a really early poster because it's not rated yet. Those posters usually go for a little bit more money. Big question, how much you want for it? In 350. The expert, Dennis Quaid himself, is called to the shop to check the legitimacy of the item. Do you mind if I call somebody down and check out the autograph? Not at all. Dennis authenticates the item and Rick promises to hit him up after he's done with work. All right, so the big question is, did you sign that? It's illegible as it is, that's me. Well, thanks for the uh, authentication. So I'll give you a hundred bucks for it. How about uh, 250? All right, I'll do 200. Great. He's a Romeo and Juliet model from Shalomi Aziza. Everybody's favorite love story. It's pretty cool. Shalomi Aziza comes from an artistic family. Chum talks a little about the creator and the muses of the art pieces. Started painting little scenes on rock, telling them and- Chum likes the sculptures and wants to know their value. As always, Chum decides to call an expert to the shop and help him decide a price for the item. The thing about Shlomi is he worked many different mediums. What kind of value do you think these have? I think the expert recommends a fair price for the sculptures. It's very difficult to put a value on. Still worth $2,000, a fairly rare piece. The negotiations begin. 500 on each. I'd like to stick around like the $4,000. Force clock from the Cold War era. From my uncle, who was an Air Force mechanic, took it out of some plane that he worked on back in the Cold War days. This is what is known as a universal clock, really. It went in all sorts of aircraft. The clock is still functional, but the old man wants to be careful with how much he spends on items that are not in a high demand. The negotiations begin. So how long you had it in your family, sir? 50 years. Is it working? Yep. It has a stopwatch capability. But this clock is not in high demand, so I'm not going to break the bank to buy it. What are you trying to get out of it? Three hundred dollars. Be a buyer about a hundred and fifty dollars. Middle at two fifty. I'll go to two and a quarter, but I ain't going no higher than that. Yeah, I could do that. 
Go okay. write it up, chum. Pottery duck from Colima, Mexico. All right. Uh the seller wants to get rid of the paranormal duck. Weird things happening around the house, falling around the duck. So that's why I'm looking to sell it. I'm asking $4,000 for the duck. It does have magic powers. Rick takes a closer look at the item and asks for a price. You can still see where in the kiln. Went into a kiln like this, and it came out with those beautiful finishes on it. I mean, I mean, that's how beautiful they did it. How much are you looking to get out of this? About $4,000. Um, it could be very, very old. Incredible condition, which is kind of scary. Any place you go in Mexico, there's like counterfeit versions of stuff like this. I'd like someone to look at it. Bob, how you doing? That is quite the duck. 2,000 years ago, they made animals go into a tomb, and they'd lay the body, place these animals around. All of the animals they would put in the tomb had a function. Most of them were to be eaten in the afterlife, and this form, very rare. So what's it worth? It's stunning. 8,000. Okay. So you want 4,000 for it. Okay, I mean, I give you four. It does take a long time to sell it. Okay, awesome. All right. I've got this ancient Japanese katana signed by Koita Ishida, and I'm interested in selling it. I've never had an original. And when I seen this one here, that was it. I wanted it. And you mentioned the name. And who is he? Descendant of uh, Mitsunari Ashida, Colonel the Battle of Sakigahara. Does that make it special? The seller shows the signatures on the sword to Kuri. We remove this handle, the signature underneath. This was all deciphered by a Japanese lady, Koita Ashida. That's what's on the tank. How much are you looking to get? Oh, a million bucks. An expert is called in to authenticate the item. The expert takes a look at the signatures and authenticates them. Swords like this are laminated. Their cutting ability is unparalleled. During World War II, footage of one that cut through a machine gun. Is it real? We have to remove the handle. There is no such maker as Ishida Koeda. Signature would actually be on this side. What we have here, a reproduction. Wow. We're not gonna be able to make a deal. Mike, you mind giving him my hand? Yeah, I'm disappointed. It fooled me. I learned a lot. I got a painting here. A painting by Prince. He was a big pop culture icon. My family was into Prince. I'm not 100% sure of what was going on in his head when he made it. It's a character that he created. I'm looking to sell the painting for $50,000. Prince was a megastar. So where did you get it? Know a guy that happened to work with with Prince for a number of years, and he connected me with Dry Cleaner. I guess when she was picking up clothing, there were things that he didn't want to take with him or another, and this was one of them, so she ended up with it. So you have no paperwork or anything else like that? No. So Rick asks the price of the artwork. How much are you looking to get out of it? I'm looking for 50 grand. 50 grand. Your big problem here is you have zero paperwork. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, Rick calls an expert to verify the painting. A lot of interest in Prince is okay. much in demand. Do you know if you ever painted anything? I'm willing to believe that he painted. Does that autograph look anything like Prince's? It looks just like Prince's autograph. If you had all the paperwork, what would it be worth? 50 to 100,000. Thanks, man. Rick refuses to make a deal with the man.